Welcome to Virtual Cam. This application is specifically designed for beginning photography students uh, so that it could assist them for better understanding the complex photography uh, techniques such as uh, film speed setting, aperture setting, and shutter speed setting. Uh, each uh, the, the virtual cam application basically has been uh, deconstructed uh, into uh, individual uh, settings at first. Uh, so the purpose for that is by, by deconstructing the actual application and breaking it up uh, into easily digestible parts, the beginning photography student can, is, can better understand each setting more in depth before adding additional complexity to the uh, learning process. So the first uh, lesson plan, so the application basically is embedded in a, a website, complementary website, and it consists of four lesson plans. The first lesson plan basically discusses only how this beginning photography student can manipulate the film speed. Um, there are also um, an additional link here in case uh, some users prefer to have the application larger. And let's say if you're on your laptop, maybe you want it smaller. So you have the choice of making it larger or having it smaller uh, depending on uh, your device. Um, the film speed, again, when we look at this interface, um, we can see that the application has been uh, deconstructed into uh, film speed, shutter speed, aperture setting, and uh, original image setting, and manipulated image preview boxes. We can also see that the, all the images have been shot with a 50 millimeter lens. So as the photography students interact with uh, the different film speeds, they can automatically see a change happen in the manipulated image window. And they can automatically also see that the film speed uh, feedback box updates in an orange text while the aperture setting and the shutter speed setting are locked into in active mode or default mode. Um, so by Deconstructing the individual settings into in, into digestible pieces, the photography student can better understand how the higher film speed number is basically more sensitive to light, thus better suited to use for darker lighting conditions. Uh, they can also they can, they can also uh, notice that the lower film speed produces much more saturated colors than the higher film speed. Uh, so this is this concludes the first lesson plan on film speeds. The second lesson plan uh, is basically focused on the aperture setting. And again, we have an option to um, click on um, the actual link to get the aperture setting larger. Um, and basically manipulate the, um, the f-stops. So again, as I manipulate the different f-stops, a few things are happening. First, I can see that the, the iris of the lens opening, which allows the light in, basically gets larger at lower f-stop numbers. I can also see that by choosing a, a lower f-stop number, which produces larger uh, lens opening, I get um, more of a depth of field where the background blurs out significantly, where in the lower one, actually it's a little hard to see that, but you can see, you can actually see, you can read the text, and you can see the bird cage a lot more clearly than, for example, when we move to a lower f-stop number. You can also see that the stones that are closer to the camera uh, at f2.8 are focused, but the ones that are farther away are out of focus. Whereas in lower number f-stop, you can see that almost all of the stones are in focus. 
Uh, going back to the actual website, um, there's also additional uh, information that can help the student, photography student, to better understand how more lighting uh, uh, and larger opening creates more sh uh, shallower depth of field versus a smaller opening which produces a deeper depth of field. You can also see an animation and textual information about the different aperture settings and what each one of these settings basically do, as well as some image references to help the photography student to better visually understand um, how the different f-stops affects the image. There's also an aperture exercise where, uh, based on this understanding, the student learner can actually go out and uh, practice uh, to better understand this process. However, um, from initial standpoint, by simply clicking on the actual settings, the student uh, can automatically understand how um, the different settings affects the finalized image. Again, only one uh, setting is working at a time to allow the beginning photography student to build uh, information and build knowledge and uh, not get overwhelmed by too much information all at the same time. In the third lesson plan, uh, again the student, photography student, can manipulate only the shutter speed. Uh, so again, based on this understanding, once I start clicking on the different shutter speed numbers, I could see the image gets updated and I could also see it in the preview image, the shutter speed preview boxes. And based on this understanding, I can again see that the lower shutter speed number uh, allows more light into the camera thus better suited uh, for, for specific uh, conditions. For example, if I also go in a lower number, uh, you can see that the water um, gets a lot more cloudy and more um, uh, not, it's not as clear as a higher shutter speed number where the water looks very sharp and, and everything actually looks very sharp versus when I go to the lower number I can see it's more smooth, much smoother than uh, the higher shutter speed numbers. I can also come back to my uh, the actual website, and once I click on that, again I could see basic animation how the slower shutter speed uh, will move slower, so it allows more light in. I could also see. Uh, like how a slower shutter speed can affect the amount of light that comes into the camera versus a faster shutter speed. And again, I will have access to additional exercises that I could complete to better understand the shutter speed setting. The last lesson plan. The last lesson plan is on um, basically when the photography student can interact with all the settings dynamically. Um, this is of particular importance because once the photography student understands how film interacts, film speed interacts with light and how the opening of the aperture allows more or less light in and how the shutter speed um, again affects how quickly or how slowly light gets into the camera. By the time the student, photo the photography student gets to lesson plan four, they can better understand and comprehend the full interaction with all these settings simultaneously. So again, if I go back to my f-stop 2.8, um, I could again manipulate these settings if I want to kind of see the water so it's more smooth. I can simply click on a lower uh, number and I can automatically see the water like smooths out. And if I decide that uh, maybe if it's a little too dark and if I move that, you can see that again the water is not 
it's no longer as smooth as when I had it as 2.8 so basically the depth of field is much more significant as at a lower f-stop number than a higher f-stop number we can also see as I go on a higher number I can actually read the text and I can see the bird cage and I can see the water a lot more clearly than when I'm on a lower f-stop where it um, allows um, uh, you know, a lot of, basically you get more, more of a depth of field. So by providing uh, immediate visual feedback through direct manipulation and interaction and seeing, a, seeing the result in the preview window and also being able to compare the manipulated image with the original image, the beginning photography student can fully and much better understand the dynamics between these three main settings, the aperture, shutter, and film speed, and all the combination between these three settings that produce the final imaging result.